131 ass eater. This is our complete setup. SNS flywheel, our MHP lightning rods, our heads, our piston. We are running a fueling cam, fueling lifters, a pair of Screaming Eagle adjustable push rods, and the Moonshine Horsepower 2 in 1 Pro Mod exhaust with the patented fueling anti reversion chambers. Is what's getting that exhaust out of the bike through the back of the bike, full length pipe, and she makes the torque and the horsepower. We'll dive into the dyno graph. We're gonna dive into the parts in this machine so you guys can see what it took to make it and what you guys need to know for your build. We talk a lot about what's in these bikes, but we don't show you every part and break them down. Today, we're gonna break down this build. This is running our 131 ass eater and we have two options and the main difference is the piston we run in the motor and the cam choice we have one that is hitting harder on the bottom we have one that is for you guys racing you want every ounce of horsepower because you're going to be running you know 65 to 7,000 rpms and you have to win a race so the torque setup is predominantly for someone that really doesn't go beyond 5,500 RPMs. They're never gonna hit 6,500, 7,000 RPMs. Or it's for someone riding two up, or if you have a heavy bike and you're also riding two up, or just a heavy bike and you're riding single up and you're loaded down all the time, we wanna do the torque setup. And every rider is different. Some guys wanna ease on the throttle and have more torque off the hit. Some guys are gonna twist the throttle quicker so they don't need all the torque on the bottom and roll into it. So we have two setups depending on the bike or the rider. So I'm gonna dive in and explain the differences and what makes the differences. But right now, both setups get a brand new Harley Davidson 131 cylinder. This is the cylinders that Harley's selling on their 131 setups or they come on their crate motor, their 131. The difference between ours and theirs is we do a 4.313 bore. We take this cylinder, we torque plate it, we measure our piston, and we do one final home cleanup to make sure that it's straight and it has the exact clearance that our setups demand. Torque plate, for you guys that don't know, we're simulating how this guy is stressed while it's in your engine with the studs on it clamped down because, believe it or not, it changes after they're clamped compared to just sitting on the bench still and we want to simulate that so we can make them as round as possible while they're actually installed in your motorcycle. So that's the cylinder. The next main thing are the pistons. So if you notice, we have one piston with a little dome. The other piston, a little bit more dome. And we're setting both of these motors up for the exact same compression because we're gonna run these on pump gas. 91, 93 octane is what they're set up for. And the reason we have to have more dome on the horsepower guy is because the cam closes later. As the piston travels up, the intake's still open longer, you bleed some compression off, then it traps it. So when we squeeze at the top, we need to squeeze it a little more because the cam closed later. This guy, your cam's closing down here, so we don't need as much dome when we get to the top to compress the air. So same exact builds, the two differences in the motors are gonna be pistons, and they're gonna be camshafts. We typically go with two cams on the horsepower build. We have an MHP 590 we run, and we run a Ward Performance 550. The difference is, is the 590 is gonna get a touch more horsepower out of it. We're squeezing the bow springs a little bit more. The Ward cam, less lift, gets a ton of power still, a little easier on your valve train. So some guys wanna be easier on the valve train, some guys wanna push the limits. So on our torque setup, we're running a cam that closes at 34 degrees. This is Fueling's 592 cam. It's a 592 exhaust lift. It's actually less intake lift on their cam. But this guy is a torque monster. The graph speaks for itself. It pops up over 140 foot-pounds of torque as soon as the graph starts. You know, under 2,500 RPMs, this graph is going over 140. Then you hit like 32, 3,300, and she pops up to head straight towards that 150 mark and it almost taps 160. Now keep in mind this graph, the bike has BST rims on it. So it, it's inflated a little bit because the rim is lighter. So we wanna make sure that we're letting you guys know that. That's why this graph looks so good. 
Um, the other graph we're going to show you here in a second for the horsepower setup is on the same wheels so they're consistent. If you are the horsepower guy from about 42 to 4500 on up, the horsepower guy takes over and that's where she runs away. When you're racing someone, you're usually going from 65 to 55, so if you were to race, the horsepower motor is going to win. I don't care if it's eighth mile, quarter mile, if you're riding the machine properly and you're hitting your shift points at 6,500 every time, you're going to win the race. But if you're not worried about winning races and you want instant torque, the bike's heavy, you're cruising, you just like getting on the throttle and ripping, the torque motor is very square and that's the setup for you. And to, to keep it even, this graph also had a pair of BST carbon fiber wheels, like we said earlier. Both of them have BST wheels on them, so the graphs are a little bit higher than if you were running a heavier rim. Keep that in mind. We just wanted to compare them to, we don't have a lot of motors done with this one for a lot of data, but we had both setups done just recently with pretty much the same temperature outside, um, the same humidity with the same setup rear wheels. 131s and below, we're running the moonshine horsepower CNC ported heads. Our heads are built by Frankenstein Engine Dynamics and 131s and below, our head is a plus 1.5 millimeter over the Harley stock size valve. So it's a plus 1.5. The plus 1.5 heads from us, we are using the round port Harley had. We're just porting it out. If you look at this guy, there's no missed material. This is a special program we use. If you buy a new set of heads from us, we get them where the ports start off smaller than a factory port. Therefore, after we're done porting them, there's no missed areas. If we start off with your head that's a little cheaper and do a port, you'll see that there'll be some missed material, kind of like the combustion area. Look at that. You can see lines in the black. Can you get up close enough to see the lines? So the CNC cut the paint. That's how close we were there, but it didn't cut all the way through the paint because we didn't need to. It was at the perfect um, height that the combustion chamber was being built at. Very nice setup, stainless steel valves in this guy. We got titanium retainers. Um, we're running PSI springs on our heads. Sometimes we will do a Keeble white spring, depending on the application and what we're setting them up for. And you can usually tell if someone's running our heads because on the side of the motor, we have our badging right below the lower rocker box cover. And when we do the smaller heads, which are these guys, compared to our monster heads, we run a Harley 64 millimeter intake manifold that goes through our CNC porting. Frankenstein has taken that porting over as well. They port match them to the heads. They came up with their own design for the port, and they're just awesome. So if you call us up and you want a pair of heads for your build, make sure you get the 66 millimeter intake manifold port match to them. This we're gonna run with a factory Harley Davidson Screaming Eagle 64 millimeter throttle body. We call it a 66 because we get just a little bit bigger here behind the throttle body, but it pairs and it's made to be run with a Harley Davidson 64 millimeter throttle body. Very nice piece. So that's the top end of the motor. We've gone over the pistons. We're on a pair of total seal rings with our pistons gone over that multiple times in our video. Great quality stuff, made in America. Pistons are CP Carrillo. We get those from California, from CP, who's in California. Intake manifold, CNC ported right in Texas. The heads are CNC ported and assembled in Texas. Anytime we're doing a pair of heads and we're making over 140 horsepower, the flywheel's being built. We have two options. We can build a stock flywheel that gets welded, it gets pinned, it gets trued, and we get a pair of rods. Or we can go with a pair of s, &S flywheel halves that are brand new, and it gets the same process, but we're starting with a brand new sprocket and pinion side of the flywheel. Our rods are similar to the Carrillo shelf rods. The difference is we lost a little bit of material in the beam. We didn't want to lose any material down the bottom because we wanted the end that's being connected to the flywheel pin to be as robust as possible because we want this shape this round hole to stay as round as possible as it lives inside of your engine, all right? But we did reduce a little bit of mass and material here in the beam. What you will notice on our rod is this guy. Right there, there's a dimple. That is a pin end pocket. This is the pin end because it's holding your piston pin. So we have a pin end pocket in the rod and what that's doing 
it's allowing the stress when this guy's being pushed right here down to be distributed across the whole rod instead of all the stress to be right in the middle. So it's dispersing the stress along the entire rod instead of directly in the middle. The other thing we have in our rods that are different between, besides this being lighter, the pin end pocket, is we have arc grooves in the bushing. So the arc groove is this reset cut out where the oil hole is and what it's doing, it's allowing more oil to make it to the 12 o'clock position and the six o'clock position in the rod and that's where all the stress is. When you get all the way up the top dead center, the pin and the piston, the piston's trying to rip off of the pin and all the stress is right there on your 12 o'clock location. And we are trying to feed more oil to that spot. The other spot that gets stressed is when she's all the way at bottom dead center, the pin is trying to push through the rod and that's at your six o'clock location and we're trying to supply more oil there because those are the, your wear surfaces. And we want more oil because we want that guy to wear less. And the oil is going to help distribute the load. It's going to run a little cooler, just a little better setup. So those are our grooves. That's unique to our rod. The pin end pocket is unique. And these guys are the MHP Lightning Rods, only for M8 Harley-Davidson engines by CP Carrillo. Really, really nice rod. So lifters we run in pretty much any of our high dollar motors. We're going to the boys at Fueling. Feeling has these lifters. These are the race series lifters. The race series lifters are made by a company called Johnson. There's two lifter companies out there. There's Johnson and Johnson High Lift. These are made by Johnson. I believe them to be the best lifter company in America. And that's why we run the Feeling lifters in all of our high-end motors. The race lifter is a very, very nice lifter. This is the same lifter that GM decided to put in their Copo Camaro project in cars. And those motors go through more scrutiny through GM than any other motor. And it's pretty much the same lifter. The difference is we're an oil cooled engine. So the flow through the lifter, through the push rod is increased on these lifters compared to that lifter. Besides that, same lifter, very nice lifter. We put these in all of our big motors, all of our high horsepower applications. We recommend them. Let us know which one's right for you, whether you want the parts to assemble your own or you want us to build them. We recommend us building them because we build two a day. We know the specifications. We have a special sequence for doing head gaskets on these motors so they don't blow. And it's been a learning curve. What we do now today is different than what we did six months ago or a year ago or two years ago. Um, assembling two motors a day, we learn a lot. We learn what these gaskets are doing. We learn what this cylinder does. Every motor is a little bit different. Every combination is a little bit. And we tweak our program as we grow. So if you have questions, you need a pair of heads and you're doing a job fast, we typically have these bad boys in stock. No cores needed if you do the new ones. It is a little bit more money. If you want us to do your heads, you can send us your heads. We'll do your heads. The reason we want to do your heads if you send them in is we want to make sure that you're getting back the same quality you send us. We don't want to give back a pair that's beat up if you have a pair of beat up heads. But in our program, if you do have some corrosion on your fins, we do have a program Frankenstein has wrote for us where we can refinish these fins like Harley did and we can make them look good again. So this is a bike we've been working on for a couple of years with this customer. His name is Gus and he feels he did the bike backwards because before we did the motor build, he did the Krauss KRT inverted front end with the Olin's fork on it. He did the radial brakes front and rear on the bike with the Behringer calipers custom brake lines from us. The tires on this bike, these are the Metzler Cruise Techs. They're aggressive tire. Um, they're a little heavier, but they are stickier. They're not gonna get the longevity wear out of the Bridgestone um, Battle Cruise that we run, but they'll hold the road a little bit better. So a little more performance driven tire. We pair those with a pair of carbon fiber BST Twin Techs, full floating race rotor that we do on most of our builds. And of course, this is the Kraus Moto KRT full inverted fork setup. It's running an Olin's plus three quarter inch inverted fork, valved for Kraus by Olin's. It has radial mounts that are actually built by Kraus for these front ends with a radial Behringer caliper. The color of these calipers, because I know we're gonna get asked, these are the nickel option of the Behringer caliper. The brake lines are black ends with a smoke line. Really nice. These lines provide a stiff feel because the lines don't flex. 
Um, we do custom lines every time we're doing brake calipers on a bike. And of course, to finish it off, it has a pair of Krauss Moto triple trees and then a Krauss Moto handlebar of your choice. This guy, it is a street glide, so it's got the T-Rex pullback plate, six inch Krauss risers with ERG bars, which are Krauss's ergonomic adjustable bars. They have more adjustability than the stock fly moto motocross bars that we do on most of our setups. We run these bars predominantly on a street glide or for someone that deals with wrist and hand issues while riding. Maybe their wrist is giving them problems or their hand's going to sleep. Check this out. We don't, we don't see this a lot, but got the Krauss dash insert. This is for the older bikes. If you buy a, a 22, it's got a little bit different dash on it, um, but really cool. This is an option from Krauss. It's got the Krauss gas cap cover, really cool gas door, whatever you want to call it. It's like, it's just everything matches. I'm a fan when you run one company stuff, try to get all their stuff that matches together. It's just the same pattern. It's machined the same. The finishes are the same. So we're always a fan of keeping the same company's components with their other components. These are Harley Davidson's new mirrors. They're awesome. They are made by Rizoma, which is an Italian company. They are CNC'd. They're my favorite mirror. And what's nice is you can get them at your factory. Harley Davidson dealership. They look great, especially when you're going with that performance look. Uh, Rizoma's all performance. All their stuff's really nice. And they started out with the Euro bikes and they got the sport bikes and now they're on some American iron. So with the seven inch total rise of the T-Rex plate, you have a four and a half inch ERG bar from Krauss Moto. Right now we are looking at about, what's that, 13? 13 and a half total inches of rise and it, it feels great. My hands are just a little bit below my shoulder by a little bit. Comfortable, you know, I'm about six foot. If you're a little taller, you might want a little taller setup. If you're shorter, you might want to go down a little bit more. But this is normally the setup we run the most is about, you know, the 12 to 13 inch mark is the most common for us for what fits most riders. Gauges in this guy, really cool aftermarket gauge setup. Dakota Digitals. These gauges do stuff that the factory Harley gauges won't do. There's some settings in there that you can shoot. We got oil temperature, we got outside air temperature. You can see your oil pressure. There's stuff in the, these gauges that you normally don't do. It's got your deer indicator here, which is really nice. They're very nice. Um, some guys like the factory gauges, some guys want something a little fancier. These a little nicer.